Hi, everyone. Okay, are we live? Hi, guys. We will give you all a bit to get on. We're talking a little bit low because Aurora is napping <laughs> in the room next to us. Oh, when you guys are here, comment and let us know. And I have a funny question to ask you guys <laughs> once you're all on. Okay, so Luca has prepared a lot of the stuff here already. So we'll go over that um, as well. Just checking on everything here. And if you're gonna be like cooking this live with us, let us know so that Luca knows to slow down on some parts. Otherwise, we're gonna do just kind of an overview of everything since he had it all prepared. Can you guys let me know that you can hear? Cause I feel like I'm talking really low. Okay. Oh, hi. You used to love Facebook Lives years ago. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. Ciao. <laughs> okay, everyone's starting to join. You can hear fine. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it a little low. Um, let me know where you guys are joining from as well. And that's actually gonna tie into the funny question I have to ask you guys. <laughs> This was not planned. It's just something that literally just came up. So for anyone who doesn't know, we are going to be showing you how to make authentic carbonara because of the Italian over here. Not <laughs> Italian Roman. Italian Roman. Yeah. If you don't know, there are three main traditional pastas from Rome, like not just Italian, but do you want to, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. It's Amadriciana, <laughs> Cacio e Pepe, and Carbonara, and Grigia too, actually, if you want to. A bonus one, but those yeah. are the four very authentic <laughs> from Rome, which uh, really like uh, authentic you cannot find how I no. made it in the US. No, when people say, like, oh, I had a really good carbonara at a restaurant in the US, we're sure it was good, but like it's usually not authentic. Usually they add like cream mm -hmm. or like other things to it. So, <laughs> okay. Um, Maryland, Colorado, Hawaii. Hi, guys from the UK, but you're Spanish. Amazing. Okay, good. I'm hoping there's going to be some international people on here because that is the question, but I'm going to wait like probably a few more minutes to ask until more people are on. Um, okay, so Luca, do you want to go over the ingredients? Yes, really quick? Okay. All right, so I prepared already grated some um, 300 grams of pecorino romano and 100 grams of parmigiano reggiano. And I also added a little bit of black pepper inside. This is for about four to six people. And the black pepper is like to taste, right? Like to it's, taste. It's, I, yeah. You can always add it later. Like I just put a little bit um, right now, but always can add it later. Just like the pecorino, we usually add it on top later too. So, and pecorino has a really strong flavor. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that's the base. Those two things you want to be like a little conservative on because they're such strong flavors. So you don't want to overdo it and then you know, have it be too much. I cracked 10, actually nine egg yolk in here and one full egg, full egg. And we are going to mix this and the cheese. And this is going to basically be the base of our salsa. Then I cut the, here, I don't know if you can see, but I yeah. cut the uh, pancetta in cubes already. Uh, Semi-thick. Um, and we're going to cook the pancetta and I'll show you how and then we mix all together. So pancetta is the best alternative I could, I could find here in Texas. Yeah. Uh, the real recipe calls for guanciale, which is pork cheek. Couldn't I feel find... like you don't need to translate that. Each time he keeps well, translating, maybe, I'm like, I don't want to know. Because maybe people can find it. If, they find, if you actually say, hey, I need to look for pork cheek, maybe people can, okay. you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, so pancetta is the like second best option, even in Rome, like if there is no guanciale, we do use pancetta. And then third option, if you can find neither one of those, which by the way, pancetta defined in a pretty common grocery store in Texas, H-E-B. Uh, third option would be just regular bacon. Okay, yeah, definitely not authentic, but like, but it you know, yeah. it'll it'll work. So, yeah. um, okay. and okay. since some of you are on, can you let me know if anyone is cooking live or if you're gonna just cook later, let us know. Um, okay. So the question I have, it's so funny. I almost posted this on stories to ask, but I was like, oh, I'm going to be chatting with a bunch of you in a bit. So <laughs> Luca was on a call with our team and some of our developers and he brought up the phrase, 
um, two bird, like hitting two birds with one stone. Okay. And Luca mentioned that in Italian, it's different. They use a different word. And then one of our team members is in Brazil. And so for him, it's completely different. And I was like, that's so funny. I've never heard of like different ways. So I was hoping that there'd be people here from different places. There's, I mean, someone from Spain, maybe it's similar to Italian. Okay. So in the U S we say killing two birds with one stone. What do you guys say? We get get two birds with one fava bean. <laughs> with a fava bean, you yeah. guys. But I we think don't that's... kill them, but we get them. What? It's all, it's oh, all you right. don't kill them? No. It's oh, you not. get two that, which birds. is nicer. Yeah. I like that better. <laughs> Getting two birds with, with one fava bean. And so in if Brazil, anyone... They use rabbits. Yeah, in Brazil, he said it's still a, a stone, but it's rabbits, which it's just so funny. Um, if anyone has a different way of saying it. I think the majority of you are from the U.S. though, so when other people watch later, <laughs> they can comment and let us know. Okay, so one person's cooking live, Luca, Ashley. So yeah, so... I was that boiling the, the pasta, the water too. So step one, boil the water. Start, oh yeah, start getting good boiling. Okay, so yeah, we have that already going over here. Yep. So he's boiling the water and then and he has mm -hmm. a separate pan for, for the, the pancetta. For the pancetta. Put in right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. So let me bring this over here. And we moving this around. Okay. All right. Pancia oh, I'm not completely dry. So I'm putting the pancetta. Oh, there's no oil. Pancetta, bacon, or guanciale. You need to put in completely dry. Okay. Luca, wait. Question. Mm -hmm. Do you salt the water? Yes. Okay. Yeah. A pinch? How much? Uh, a fist. A fist. That's yes. a lot. I mean, it's for four, six people. It's a full okay. of pasta, yeah. Um, okay. So Luca is adding the... Yeah. Pancetta to a pan with nothing in it. Just gonna need to cook a bit. Okay. And are you just gonna leave it there or are you gonna stir it? I stir it, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna move away because it's a little loud. Um, okay, so in French, there's no animals. That's nice. <laughs> Make two hits with one stone. I, that's a nice version. <laughs> Okay, so he is just stirring it around. So for, I'm pretty sure he mentioned this, but for the eggs that he cracked, there's 10 total, nine are the yolk, and he put one full egg. Okay, so while this is going medium heat, you basically want the fat to come out. And get closer just in case. I guess you basically want the fat to come out from the pancetta, and then we are gonna finish cooking the pasta in that fat. So we take in the pancetta out, put it aside, and then the cook the pasta, the pasta we finish cooking in that. In the meantime, we can start doing the base sauce and mixing all together. Okay. So, what you do, just the parmigiano pecorino and pepper, you put in the in the egg yolk, and you start mixing. Can you come mix it right here in front? So okay. It's, it's, yeah. uh, it's kind of, you know, it needs to be thick, but not too thick. So, and and you don't pour, don't put all the all the pecorino and parmigiano once. Just make sure, put a little bit, see how it is. It's still like pretty runny. Then I mix a little bit more. Yes, we will put the amounts in the description yes. and all the ingredients. Yeah. Okay, so you just added okay. more cheese. I just added more, yeah. Okay. Connecticut is catch two birds with one stone. Okay, catching them is nicer too. <laughs> okay, I think I put all this. So this was a good amount of cheese actually. For So again, it's 300 grams of pecorino and 100 grams of parmigiano. And that's how the, the consistency what should be. Get really close yep. so they can see. Can Higher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me check on the. the... Oh, Spain <laughs> killed two birds from one gunshot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that one is aggressive. Okay. So here's the sauce. Pick this up. What are you doing? Just sitting around. The you really don't want to burn this because if you burn this we, we definitely ruin the taste so we will show it was it was getting closer here okay <laughs> we're getting distracted okay yeah. when i get close to the stove can you guys still hear just let me know 
Well, thank you for doing this. My husband and I have been craving carbonara since Rome. Yay, you're so welcome. Yeah, all of this, we decided to do this because we're celebrating Fit Body App's five year anniversary, which like is just so amazing that we've been here for this long and it's all thanks to you guys. So we were trying to think of something fun that we could do for the community and for everyone and everyone's always asking about his cooking. <laughs> so we were like, okay, people will for sure want that. So, okay, you can still hear, awesome. Okay, so we just need to wait for the pancetta to, to cook. Okay. Please. And for the pasta type, so we're doing spaghetti because that's my favorite, but traditionally it's spaghetti or rigatoni. Rigatoni, <laughs> rigatoni literally just picked up his head. You guys can see he's always on the couch. That's his spot. <laughs> Let me know if there are any questions about the cooking or otherwise. <laughs> Aurora really might wake up like any minute. So we're going to be on probably for about a total of 30 minutes, right? Yeah, You're thinking, yeah, so 15 more minutes or so. Hi, Rig. <laughs> OK, so. All right. Luca, what is like the total time for cooking the pancetta, would you say? Uh, it depends how, how, how big the piece is, how thick it okay. is. Um, it needs to get a, a little bit crunchy, but not burnt, obviously. Um, I would say like less than 10 minutes for sure. Okay. Less is than that also like a personal preference it thing is, though? Because is. I like crunchy and I always feel like I'm telling him to cook it more. <laughs> okay. I so. guess I like it like bacon. <laughs> okay. So what are you doing now? I'm separating the pancetta from, so I leave the, the oil from the pancetta in the pan and then I move this over here. Did you just say you leave the pancetta in the pan or the oil? Sorry. I don't leave know. the what oil. Do I yeah. don't know. I, I need to leave the oil in here. I think, yeah, he needs to leave here. the oil in. So he's removing the pancetta. Only the pancetta. Yeah. Maybe he said it right. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Just want to be in sure. In time, you can definitely put the pasta in. Okay, so pasta is going in. Do you break the spaghetti? <laughs> no. That's like a big faux pas. You do not break the spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti. Luca has been on me for my spaghetti. pasta making carbonara. pronunciations spaghetti. lately. Spaghetti. Is that it, Luca? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, someone said, Oh, I hope you'll do more lives on YouTube if you guys want me to. Absolutely. Um, what do you think is the best? Okay, this is for you, Luca. What do you think is the best, most important kitchen item to make Roman food? This kind of pot, very important. Oh. You see this kind of pot that has a strainer okay. inside it. Okay, let me get closer. Like this there is pot that has a strainer inside, like it's a double pot. So this one is very important because what you do is you take the pasta out um, and you keep the water because the water is going to be very important mm. to mix the sauce with the pasta. I'll show you the guys. Pasta water. I've talked about this on Insta yeah. before. Yeah. Some yeah. of you pasta water is really important. might remember. Even I should move this over here. Okay. What would you say the total cooking time is for carbonara, Luca? 20 minutes if you do everything right. 20 minutes if you do everything right. Okay. If you time everything. Like, for example, I, should, I could have put the pasta in 10 minutes ago. Okay. I would be ready right now. Okay. We have pictures with Santa right after this. So it's a packed afternoon for us. <laughs> we're literally going to, we're going to answer some questions if we have more time after this and then eat. Even now, because the, the pasta is going to take a few minutes now. You need to wait for the pasta to cook. Okay, so everything's done? Yeah, so okay. I'm leaving this here. You guys see, I, don't, I mean, I can't really tilt it because the it's, oil, I know, I don't want to get this. This is the fat from the pancetta. I leave okay. this here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish cooking the pasta in here. Okay, so the pasta is not going to be finished in the it's pot. Gonna be, it's going to be very al dente, al dente okay. very al dente when I take it out from here, almost. I don't want to say raw, but very, very crunchy. And okay. then it's going to be finished cooking here. Yep. Okay. 
And I think that the most, I mean, I'm speaking for Luca here, guys. And those of you that know me know I married an Italian for a reason, okay? I'm not the cook in the family. So um, the hardest thing with carbonara is not cooking the eggs. <laughs> right, yeah, Luca? <laughs> because it is eggs and that can turn into scrambled eggs if you're not careful yeah and if that happens that is not right we're gonna scratch this video it never happened, it never <laughs> happened. It, this never happened oh my gosh he's gonna have to be really focused in that time to be sure that doesn't happen and luca what would you say is the secret to that not happening is it the right temperature the, the, the method the, the pasta water okay so you mix pasta and water. keep stirring and, and mixing the pasta water and continue continue like stir like continuously so don't let it sit basically and okay you actually don't even have the flame going so the flame is not going. so mm -hmm. just a hot pan and pretty the, much the, the pasta also is hot right okay and the pasta water and that's it okay there's some more questions does luca have a suggestion for any must try vegetarian pasta dish dishes um i feel like marinara no like uh yeah we have the, um, the base sauce i think we showed it before like we the yeah. base red sauce we make in Italy, it's either with garlic or with onions. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you know, very simple uh, red sauce. Um, I mean, we also make a lot of rice lentils. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I had it today. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, it's actually really it's good It's so option. good. They, like, put pasta sauce in yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's like, so a, I don't want to say it's, it's not a soup. How do you no. call it? No, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a more It's denser than a soup. It's not like a soup, but it's really good, yeah. Okay. My kids saw Santa last night. Yay. Yeah, I'm, we're curious to see how this goes. <laughs> okay, uh, Luca, Miriam said, can you confirm that pasta should be cooked al dente? My boyfriend is team cook it all the way done. Yeah, I'm al dente. al dente. I always tell them Italians do it al dente. 100%, yes. Um, funny story, when Luca and I first started dating, um, and he made me pasta. My first reaction was like, "It's not cooked," because <laughs> yeah, it was al dente. Yeah, she said, like, okay, "Next time, it's really good, but next yeah. time, can, can you cook it more?" <laughs> yeah. Now I've learned. So your boyfriend, you say boyfriend, yeah, just you know, has to acquire the taste for al dente. Um, okay, it's done. okay, one more question. Okay, let me come back over here and then I'll get it's to the question. Done. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. So the, what are you doing right now? I'm just, just testing it. I'm just testing it, but it should be done, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so water is almost done boiling. The water is boiling. Pass it oh, inside. sorry. Water is boiling. Pass it inside. It's very crunchy. So that's what I'm... It's all raw, but it's crunchy. So I'm going to take it out and turn this off. Okay. Let me... Hold on a sec. Um, Luca, let me just pull this over. So hopefully you guys get okay. a good view. Okay. Okay. I'm going to turn this on. And then, Luca, do to... you need to use pasteurized eggs for this? I think they're always, no? Mm, I don't know. That's a question. I need, I need to go. We need to go back to this question okay. because, yeah, I don't think GBD. we do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like it is very thin. Okay, so now I need that. Sorry, this. So I'm gonna do some of the pasta water. I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna start mixing it with the fat. Two scoops of the pasta well, it water. It depends on how much, how much pasta. pasta. It depends okay. on much pasta. It depends on a few things, so the kind of pasta. But what you want to see eventually will start to become creamy, or even just with the pancetta fat, basically. There you go. Okay. So and this flame is going around, huh? Oh, the right flame now. is on right now. Okay. Is on, yeah. um, I'm not going to interrupt in these next few minutes because this is the most important part. So 
Okay, but pay close attention. <laughs> but basically, what we're doing is pouring this in this. I'm ready with the pasta water, so if it's too thick, you add a little bit of pasta water, you keep searing. If it's too loose, like, you know, it's too runny, sorry, the, the cream, then you can add some pecorino parmigiano to make it thicker. You, you want it to be creamy, uh, but you obviously don't want it to be too thick or too runny. Yeah, all right. So I'm turning this off. So flame off, okay. We add the we add the pancetta, and then you you go stir stir stir. I already see that it's clamping a bit, so I'm gonna add some pasta water. the hardest part by far why what's, is it hard uh, what's the hardest part about it uh, to make sure that we don't make an omelette okay <laughs> that's not fun. and the secret is just to keep stirring keep stirring and adding pasta water when you see that it's clumping together but that's that's pretty, it's, i don't know if you guys can see it but it's, you know it's getting to be pretty creamy yeah well, you want to get the plates yeah Okay. Pretty creamy. Loud. Okay. Is this the first plate? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm gonna get you some pancetta. Yes. Yeah. More? Yeah, um, no, just some pancetta. I don't find the right thing here. And I can add more pecorino or parmigiano yeah, on top, but right? That, that's that's it. Like, okay. Very simple. I don't know if you can show the the creaminess. Yeah, I'm trying to get the light so you guys can see. It. Someone said, "Is the egg fully cooked?" shouldn't be <laughs> it, 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 no no okay. like it, it, it's safe because it, you know it's mixed in with pasta water which is really hot and, and the and the um and the, the pasta itself but someone. that's uh, that's that's about it that's 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 fun that's uh, carbonara okay. i'm putting pecorino on that's real carbonara from rome yes that's, that, that's how we cook <laughs> it that's how we eat it every restaurant in rome that's how they cook it they you know, use cream we didn't use any other weird stuff yeah um, one time a restaurant in LA, I remember they made me carbonara wheat peas. Do you remember that? Yeah, oh no, it was zucchini flour. Oh, zucchini. It was zucchini oh, flour. Zucchini flour. Yeah, zucchini, yeah. Zucchini, in zucchini LA, flour. it was like supposed to be one of the best, most authentic Italian places. Italian places. And when they found out he was from Italy, the waitress was like, oh, the chef studied in Italy. So Luca was like, great, like I'm looking forward to it. And he ordered carbonara. Yeah. And before we got our plate, the chef came to our table to apologize <laughs> to Luca to say it's not totally authentic. Like I have to change it for the American palate and presentation and all that because Italian cooking is so simple yes. and American <clears throat> cooking. Is oh, we're gonna not... eat it. You, get, I know, you want I know. to eat it immediately. That's Luca, this is like story of my life. You guys, Luca is constantly yelling at me to start eating my food because the texture will change. Like well, just wait, wait, especially carbonara. Especially carbonara. Especially yeah. Carbonara. But I want to answer a few questions before we hop off. Um, okay. So there was one about, um, oh yeah. I love the simplicity of carbonara. I wish restaurants would stop adding cream. Yes. Um, Luca mm -hmm. princess Rose 15 wants to know, how do you feel about Alfredo sauce? <laughs> That's not Italian. <laughs> it's not Italian. And I remember when I was studying abroad in Italy, we went to a restaurant that was called like Alfredo's or something like that. And they say that that is where Alfredo sauce was made but it's a complete tourist trap like and also it's... <laughs> i've never been there i didn't even know the existence of the place by the way yeah and it's rome. like it's in the center it's in like the most popular one of the most popular parts of rome so yeah um it looks delicious i need my telling cooking game how do you reheat 
That's a tough one. Carbonara, you need to eat immediately because the, 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 yeah. the egg will start clumping together. So it's something that you need to eat fresh and immediately. You could save a little pasta, pasta water for a little for later to you know get the sauce creamy again, but it is not the same thing. And this yeah. needs to be then as soon as you're done with it. In Italy, they do not let you take food to go. It is like, yeah, would you right. say sacrilegious, Luca? Yeah. It's like against the you rules. Know, that actually was a, a cultural shock of mine when we moved mm. here, you know, <laughs> when I actually moved here to study and I saw people taking food away. Like, it makes sense. You paid for it. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah. It but for them, it's, it's like they take so much there. pride in like how it's supposed to be presented well, and, well. and enjoyed and experienced that they're like, no. <laughs> You get to only um, mm -hmm. eat it at the restaurant. Is it good? Is it good? Okay, sure. I just don't want to be eating on camera. I am. Um, I don't <laughs> I'm not gonna ruin. It. I like. I made it. Yeah. I, this is my reward. Um, especially is it, after today's workout. Uh, yeah. Is it okay to eat while pregnant? What do you think? Um, I mean, uh, you know, it's a cultural thing. I think like pregnant mm. pregnant women in Italy eat it. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you, if you can find pasteurized egg, it's, it's even like an extra safety precaution. Um, I would say ask your doctor yes, because obviously. we don't want to yeah. say like yes or no, but that is just the, you know, context and info from Luca's perspective. So is there an authentic Italian cookbook you would recommend for us I American know. beginners? No. There isn't, but like that is, I mentioned this before, that's like one of my dreams and like our dreams together to like create something like that. So maybe one day we're like, we haven't even began like actually putting that into action, but maybe one day. So no, we don't, he doesn't have one because all of the recipes are in his head. You know, he doesn't ha ever need to look at a cookbook. And also, let me say that this is probably the best carbonara I ever made. Like it's, okay. it's really good. And now I'm having FOMO. I need to it's eat it. It's really good. Can I have a fork? Like the consistency is right, or the consistency is right on. Oh, rig rigatoni. Do you guys see that? Rigatoni, do you want to say hi? He thought I was holding food out. Okay, I'm gonna have one it's bite. It's right on the consistency. Of one bite. Well, you probably waited a little too long, but yeah, I would err on the side of caution. See, guys, him and like he's what? always saying it. You have to eat it now, now. Um, I would err on the side of caution with carbonara. It's not officially cooked yolk. Yeah, for sure. Definitely like check with your doctor. Yeah. We agree. Mm. Mm. Okay. It, came out, it came out pretty good. That's pretty good. I'll save you guys the my chewing and trying to talk on camera. Thank you guys so much for joining, Luca. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. All right, what's your second favorite Italian pasta dish, Luca? Amatriciana or cacio pepe. Mm, I'm conflicted. Amatriciana and cacio pepe. Kind of tied. They're kind of tied, but they're two very different mm. tastes, right? Amatriciana is red sauce. Yeah. Cacio pepe is cheese, so I, I think it depends on what you're feeling. Um, but I wanted to say thank you guys so much for joining. Again, this was just to do a little something for the community and to thank you guys for five years of the Fit Body app and being a part of this community and supporting us. We did launch a promo for anyone that hasn't had a membership or had one and wants to restart. So the six month membership is back just for a limited time, Luca. 50% off. 50% off. So if you go to fitbodyapp.com, you can see all those details, seven day free trial before you fully commit. I'll talk more about it on Instagram, but um, yeah, thank you guys so much. I'm going to eat. <laughs> then we're going to go see Santa mm -hmm. and thank you guys again. Talk to you later. Bye. Ciao. <laughs>